Okay, um, one more minute and then we'll go on to something new. Um, where is that attendance sheet? Has it been passed around everywhere? It's on the back row, okay. <coughs> so as soon as that's finished, we'll start the next lesson then. Questions? No. Where's the attendance sheet now? It disappeared? No. It's okay. Should be getting quicker the nearer it gets to the end because names are getting ticked off. I'll just continue. So when that's finished, just uh, bring it up to me. Uh, okay, so we'll have a look at the next lesson now. So I, I don't know if we'll do all this lesson now, but we can at least get a start on it. Mm -hmm. So um, just before we do get a start on it, uh, just to practice a couple of things here. So for example, if I wanted to calculate or expand something like this, um, that's just equal to this, which is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, which is x squared plus 4x plus 4. But this here is actually a common type of problem where we want to square. So we should learn a quick way to do this, okay? So for example, if you have something like um, AX plus B and we want to square it, let's see what we get. So that is AX plus B times AX plus B, which is A squared X plus ABX plus ABX, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Plus 
b squared. Or in other words, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared. Or as how I like to remember it, if you prefer, if you have first plus second squared, then the formula, the quick way to do it, is you square the first one, yeah, first squared plus yeah, twice the first by the second plus second squared then. So this is the quick way to do it. Now you don't have to do it this way, but it'll save a lot of time if you can do it this way. Okay, so you can write either down, uh, whichever is easier for you to understand. Probably the second way, I yeah. would think, yeah. So this is the quick formula here. Okay. Oh good. Has everybody found their name on it? Yes? Okay. Ah, so I'm only missing one person from business. Not bad. Uh, okay, let's continue. So earlier uh, this morning we saw if you have a quadratic, we can factorize it. Um, let's let's make our life easy and just make it monic for the moment. So x squared plus bx plus c. Uh, Usually we can factorize it. We'll say x plus alpha, x plus beta. But another thing we can do with it is we can change our quadratic into this form. x plus alpha squared plus beta. Now, it's um, actually actually a little bit easier I think to write it in this form because you don't have to think as hard to do it uh, this way. So how can we change a quadratic into this form and what is the verb here? So to do this, this process is called completing the square. Mm -hmm. When you take a quadratic and you write it in this form, okay, what I mean by this form is you write it as a square plus a number. That's what I mean by completing the square. So we'll we'll uh, we'll test it out. We'll see how to do this. Okay, can I do an example? Yes. You have it, yeah. I can scroll down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> right, so here's our first example of how to do this. Uh, we have x squared plus 6x plus 18. So again, we'll start with an easy example where it's monic. These are easier ones to do. So we're looking for x plus some number squared plus another number. Not too difficult to do. What you do is you take this number and you put half of it in here. So that's a tree. Mm. Yes. And then, now, just listen carefully here. For this second number, what you do is you take this number no, and no. you minus this number squared, so minus 9. And where I got this 9, it was the square of this number, the tree. Mm -hmm. And please note, here it's always a minus. Always a minus. So it's 18 minus 9, 9. Now because this is our first example, let's check that this works. So using the quick rule, we can expand. We have x squared plus... 
twice the first by the second, 6x plus the second squared plus 9. And you see, yes, we do have x squared plus 6x plus 18. So it does work then. Okay. Uh, so this is the answer, and it is right. Okay. Now let's have a look at another example. We'll, we'll do one that's a little bit harder now. Okay. Well, actually, just before that, um, I think I just want you to practice one just to make sure. Um, so try this one for me. Complete the square of this one. Okay. All right. What's the first number? Five. And the second number? One. One. Yes. Twenty-six minus twenty-five. Okay. Let's do a ex uh, little bit, a little bit harder now. So, uh, example now, we'll say x squared plus. Put in a minus. Uh, x squared minus 5x minus 3 over 4, we'll say. So it doesn't really matter that they're fractions, but it just makes it a bit harder to do. So uh, the first one here would be x minus. What? Well, yeah, 5 over 2. Because it's half of this. And then I'll use the calculator just to be careful to get the final number. So it's minus 3 over 4 minus this number squared, uh, which is minus 5 over 2. I didn't really need the minus. Why not? Why didn't I really need to write the minus in the 5 over 2? It's always positive anyway because I square it, so it doesn't really matter about that. Anyway, minus 7 is what we get here. Okay, I'll give you one that's like this to try. Um, try this one. x squared minus 7x plus... 3 over 4. You might need to use your calculator to help you finish it. Let's try this one. Okay, let's see what we get. So the first part, of course, will be 7 over 2. And we'll just check the second part here on the calculator. 53 over 4 minus, and it'll be 49 over 4. The 7 over 2 squared. 1. At the back there. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll do one more and then we'll talk a little bit about why this form is useful. Uh, so we'll just do one more example now. So all my examples have been monic. 
Let's see an example that's uh, not monic. 7x squared minus 70x plus 183. Right, any ideas on what I could do here to make it simpler? Any ideas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't quite say divide by 7. There's a different verb which is means what you mean here, where you put the 7 in the front. So you have x squared minus 10x plus 183 over 7. But what's the verb that describes putting the 7 in the front? True, but more for this job. A verb that means to take a number in the front. Yeah, all true. But what's the verb here to describe? Too general. More specific to this. Huh? Factorize or factor out. Yeah. Okay. Please note that word. Okay, so now that we've factored out the 7, what we're left with on the inside is just what we did a minute ago. So that would be 7, big brackets, x minus 5 squared, and then for the second part I'll need 183 over 7 minus 25. 8 over 7, yeah. There's one step left to do. What should I do next, do you think? Expand, yeah. Put the 7 back in. So that'll be 7x minus 5 squared plus 8. The 7 goes back in on both. Okay, let me give you one like this to try. So try this one. Minus 9x squared minus 90x minus 219. Okay, uh, so you should be nearly finished this. They're not too long to do. So we factor out the minus 9 and we're left with the monic quadratic x squared plus 10x plus 219 over 9. Let me just... Uh, okay. And let's... Now complete the square, minus 9, x plus 5 squared plus, and then we have 219, let me just open this, I want to show you something, uh, 219 over 9 minus 25, I think it is, yeah? Uh, minus 2 over 3, 
So I'll multiply in the minus 9. Uh, minus 9 x plus 5 squared plus 6 then. Yeah. Okay, so let's look a little bit at why this is a useful form. So if we just go back to the very first example we did. x squared plus 6x plus 18. So I'll just, let me put something here now. This is x and uh, this is y equals, uh, what did we say, x squared plus 6x plus 18. And then here we'll just write in the completed square form. Uh, that is y equals x plus squared isn't that what we said? Yeah, x plus 3 squared plus 9 okay and let's start at something like, I don't know, minus 10 for x so if we put minus 10 in here I get 58 if I put minus 10 in here, what should I get? I should get 58 because I haven't changed it, I've just rewritten it. So let's just check that. Uh, minus 10 plus 3 squared plus 9. And I do get 58. Okay. And let me go to the next one here. And let me just copy these down. Okay. So let's just look at how the values change here. Uh, we'll go... Oops. Oh, okay. We'll go that many. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you see here as the x gets bigger, this gets smaller, gets smaller, but then it gets bigger again. Uh, so something interesting is happening here. Because the values are getting smaller and then they're getting bigger again. So you notice that the smallest value is 9 and then it gets bigger again. And when you think about it, that makes sense that the smallest should be 9 because when you look at it in this form uh, you're saying y equals 9 plus x plus 3 squared now because this is a square number it's always always positive it can never have a negative value so what you have is y equals 9 plus something which is always bigger than zero. So it makes sense that the smallest this can be, the minimum value, is nine. Because the smallest that this one here could be is zero. And when is this zero? For what value of x? Yeah, this will be zero when x equals minus 3. So when I look at this, what I can see is, okay, when x equals minus 3, the smallest value of y will happen, and that value is 9. So let's check my spreadsheet. So when x is minus 3, I get 9, the smallest possible value. Okay. And if you were to make a graph here, it would look like this. Um, minus 3, 9, that's the smallest value. And you saw that it was getting smaller, smaller, smaller until it reached here. And then it uh, increases like this. Okay. So, does anyone know the name of this point on the graph? No. Ah, yeah. Everybody knows that. Give me something more interesting. Minimum point, there's other names for it. Or, uh, lowest, nah, something more exciting. No, don't give me lowest or smallest or tiniest. Give me something else. <coughs> no, no one else knows another name for this? <laughs> Turning point, because the graph turns. Any other points we know? Any other names?
No? One more begins with a B. You think you know? I think you might know. Say again? Not this one. Sounds like it. Not this. Vertex. Did you know it? No, okay, it's a new one. Just please note these words here. Will this graph always have a minimum? What do you think? <coughs> Any ideas? No. No, because sometimes you could have this. It's a maximum. How can we know from the question which situation it is? How can we know if we're looking at a minimum or a maximum from the question? So the A, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Problems that have an A which are negative look like this. Um, and then problems that have a, a minimum, the A here for these problems are positive. Okay. That's worth noting, so if you can write that down as well. Okay, you have that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we've only done half the lesson, so what we'll do is we'll practice some questions from the first half and then we'll start the second half next time. Uh, so just for five minutes, uh, questions, you should be able to do one, two and three. I guess you could kind of do four, but I'll do some examples of four next time. So we'll just do one, two, three, uh, A, B, C. Okay, so if you can try these now for five minutes, five minutes. Oh, like this one. 